strapped his leash on it. Wow. It's been another um, rolly night on board. We are finally just under sail. We lifted anchor in Playa Gigante and began the journey north, with the final destination of Marina Puesta del Sol in the forefront of our minds, but not before a few surf stops. And we're moving to an anchorage now called El Estillero, which is like a fishing village, which is meant to be a little protected. My guess is we'll roll a bunch, um, and then we'll hit up some more surf spots in a few days. And onwards to the marina. I'm very much looking forward to being in the marina. We really need to have some work we need to do that we've not been able to do because it's so rolly. Uh, so a few days in the marina to get the engine looked at and the windless service and things like that's gonna be very good. So for all of you who are very sad about no repair videos, <laughs> there will be repair videos in the future. <laughs> the very near future. Cool. All right, we made it to Alice Diero. And as you can see, the town itself is not quite as built up as uh, as that big building over there, but it's a pretty little bay. We're semi-protected. <laughs> Hopefully we don't roll too much. <laughs> wow. It's been rocking and a rolling as we had a very cool break. Um, so there's some other boats out here that have brought surfers in but kind of out here is this really cool reef break and I surfed maybe two hours um, it was really fun I didn't get heaps of waves and I've been a little bit chicken since I had that little near drown <laughs> I'm being a little scaredy cat but I did get some good waves and they're, big, they're pretty big and Jim's gone back out for the second time but not before Boo boo, snapping his leash. Luckily he tried to get his big closeout barrel, which he got, but he snapped his leash on it. Luckily though, um, we both bought leashes in Costa Rica because we were like, oh, there's a chance we're gonna be nowhere we can get spares. And if we snap our leash, we'll be very sad. So yeah, another cool spot, another rolly anchorage, but that's okay. Um, I'm working on some different anchoring techniques, so I might show you some tonight and i'm gonna start cooking because i'm marvin i got the hunger that only surfers get which for any of you that surf know it's an intense hunger although we don't have any surf footage we were able to get some great photos to give you an idea of how awesome some of these waves were All right, back to the kitchen. I'm also gonna make brownies. And please don't judge my choice of pop music. <laughs> Check magic right, seaweed yeah. for surf <laughs> uh, Let's see what's happening with this system. So this system, that's not until Saturday, which we're planning on being there by Tuesday, but you can see this big hurricane's like picking up and then moves up towards Mexico. So we don't want to hit that. Today's good Wednesday. It's basically going to be waves okay. all week. Right. So we're going to be somewhere we can find. Where's the next, the next spot we gotta go? Like the next decent anchorage that's at least marked. Decent anchorage, he says. There are none until we get to the marina. Wow, 
sun has set over our discussions. As you can see, it took a while to come to these conclusions. Yes. But I think it's a good plan. Want to tell them the plan? Okay, so <laughs> the plan. Uh, decided to stay here tomorrow and surf playgrounds again. So that would put us here in El Estorio on Saturday night. Uh, then we would leave early Sunday morning. What is it? A 12 hour sail? Yeah, something like 12 that. 12 hours to Puerto Santino, where there's another way, but we're probably not going to surf it. It's just going to be a day of sailing. Get there spend the night there and get up early again and then we have basically the option to leave at five o'clock in the morning making it to Aceradoras in time for the tide to enter the river mouth or we stay in Corinto that night and then make it to the marina in Aceradoras on the 21st. So yeah we're gonna Either save a bunch works. of waves but we're gonna get some waves here tomorrow and there's and waves in the north and we're in a marina exactly. where the boat's comfy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's a good plan. We have 80 liters of water. So we'll be fine with water. Tomorrow we surf and cook. Yes. And then we spend two long days of sailing. Woo! Good plan. Done. <laughs> Wow, it's been another um, rolly night on board. I thought the GPS was gonna go flying for a second there. Um, it's really frustrating because like, we're just facing in a terrible direction for the swell. And the swell's not that big. And like in the middle of the night I woke up and I put the bridle thing on and tried to hoist it one way or the other. But there's just so little wind, it makes it really hard to like get the boat to move in any direction um, so we could look at setting up a stern anchor but my dad sunk his boat once with a stern anchor so I'm a little like nervous about doing that even though I know it shouldn't happen it's yeah anyway so yeah we are getting used to life on the roll the reason to check your engine regularly this had snapped, which was allowing the hose to sit right on the um, alternator belt, which was wearing a hole very quickly through um, this radiator pipe. So I'm just going to have to set up like a system like this so nothing run, uh, rubs and then fix it properly. When we get to the uh, marina, I don't know how I'll fix it properly. I'll probably have to get this welded, which hopefully there'll be someone who can do some minor welding there. Yay! <laughs> but yeah, you should check your engine every time you start it. Oh, duct tape. That'll work for now. We'll be surfing some chocolate waves today. After a surf, we decided to try a different anchoring technique. We have rolled for the last time. Well, not the last time. We're hoping we've set up a stern anchor. Um, you can see it floating out back there. I'm just gonna tighten it up on the winch and um, with any luck, we won't roll like maniacs tonight. It'd be so good if that's the case. So um, just to let you guys know how we set the stern anchor. Um, basically, Jim uh, was up anchoring on front. We set the um, like normal anchor first fell back an extra um, kind of 15 meters, put this one down, then came back forwards with the um, stern anchor then hooked up to the back of the boat. And yeah, hopefully it set both anchors and we might not turn quite so sideways to the swell tonight. We'll just have to wait and see. It's a very small anchor. I, I was reluctant to use one of the bigger ones because the only way we have to lift it is from the back of the boat with the winch. and. It sounds like when people have used big anchors, that's when like they just hate stern anchors because they can't get them back on board and you've got to send something out to retrieve them and all this. The thing will be whether this one actually holds us at all. We'll just have to wait and see. I am going to make coconut milk. Jim is preparing beans. beans. And basically we're doing another kind of big 
food prep in preparation for two days of sailing and in what might be kind of crappy anchorages and the wind here hasn't been great so like even the sailing's not been good and then you're in like this roly-poly going sideways to the swell action thing so and being cooking in that gives me a headache like immediately They think about pulling it up and letting it turn into the wind? Yeah, because now we're just facing sideways as well. I wonder if this donate is too little and it's not holding well enough. Let's pull it up. Yeah, you're close. I wonder if they've ever dug in at all. It's got some sand and stuff on it. Pretty much there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Damn, that smells good. I know. <laughs> Alright, we got green curry. Green curry. With the coconut milk. We got pasta sauce with chickpeas. And I'm making some stuff for dinner tonight. Pinto over there somewhere. And there's San Pinto. And I also redeployed the stern anchor. It's over there because we are now facing a completely different direction. You will notice we are still facing the town this morning, despite the fact there's no wind. And the other boats have changed direction because it seems our little stern, little baby stern anchor actually did something and we slept well and didn't roll. And yeah, it's six o'clock, we're gonna have a cup of tea, Jim's gonna have a coffee and we'll head off, begin the 60 nautical mile journey to Porto Sandino, which is not a protected anchorage, but is more protected than the open coastline between here and there. Up to getting into the marina, a lot of things are semi broken. The autopilot isn't working, and I there's a wiring problem with it that I tried to kind of jerry rig, and it worked for like two days, and now it's broke again. It takes us in circles to the left, and then our water pump for the fresh water is doing something weird where it's like trickling out like very slow, so it's yeah, it works. Somewhere. Yeah, basically everything's working, but just a little bit broken. <laughs> so yeah, we've got the water pump. The French press got smashed. The, the French floor. press got. That was devastating. Irreparable, though, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I think just this constant rocking that's been happening here, and then like the really heavy winds earlier, just kind of like gave everything a bit of a beating. So when we're in the marina, we've got to service Janet, fix the water pump, service the windlass, try and fix the autopilot. Everything. Clean everything. Do a you know fuel and water fill up. Some surfboard maintenance wouldn't be the yep. worst thing in the yep. world. Surfboard maintenance. Do a vaccination campaign. Yeah, should be relaxing. We're, yeah, we're just gonna relax in the marina a few days. But yeah, no, it's that's that's the main things we need to do. Yeah. We set up a dodgy autopilot with one of the old ones where we just have to move it a little ways every five minutes. We don't have to have our hand on the tiller the whole time. Well, the wind cometh and the wind goes repetitively. We've set the sails as best we can for the wind direction, but we're motor sailing because it's really not very strong. Then we get a little gust like right now, and the sails kind of like look okay, and then it just completely dies out to nothing. We're 
entering a minefield again with all these bloody fishing things. The finds over here. Yeah, I don't know if they come out on this. That's okay. But, uh. They are just everywhere. Everywhere, huh? Yeah, it's kind of stressful. <laughs> we are finally just under sail. Having to dodge these bloody landmines. We hit one. I'm calling them landmines, the uh, fishing things. We did hit one, luckily it came straight off the keel and went under the boat, but it's really hard to see sometimes. And I actually thought I had enough distance, but Jim's about to shoot the gap between two now. They're hard to see, but there's one there and one there, and we'll just come straight through the middle and hope for the best. <laughs> Crazy. But it is really nice to be sailing. A big one. minutes and 15 seconds of exciting fishing footage. <laughs> trash, <laughs> trash fish. So basically we were right, if we prepare a bunch of food, it guarantees we catch a fish. Too bloody this time, at least here. because we were literally about to drop anchor when they came in. So Jim couldn't run back and get the camera. But um, we are anchored up in El Transito, which is an anchorage in the SV Serena Guide, but it's like, yeah, got like a one-star rating. 
because <laughs> it's a surf break. The beach boat beach. Yeah. And we're anchored way offshore and this is the marked anchorage so it's like a pretty long way. And all we can hope for is that the wind pushes us like not like it is right now so that we're getting rocked side to side constantly. Might not be a very good sleep sleeping night. And I would try the stone anchor again except um, it only has 20 meters of road on it and we're anchored in like 15 meters of water so it's probably We have a delicious dinner of pasta and trash fish. Pasta and trash fish. Perfect combination. <laughs> Thank you for making it. Yeah. Can you get a water bottle? Yes. Water bottle. Thanks. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to brain calibrate to the rocking mm -hmm. here. We're just eating the trash fish straight off the plate. That's what I figured. Mmm, mmm. Yeah, it's really good. Ah! <laughs> We're really rocking. I don't know if you can tell, but we are. Trash fish helps with the rock. <laughs> yeah. Shells your stomach. Mm, that's pretty good. It is really good. Mm, yeah, nothing shells your stomach like trash fish. <laughs> as, as they say. Mmm. Yeah, it's really good. It's not I really even, don't know why they call it I trash know. fish. It's not bad. I was about to say, I don't know why they call it trash fish. got knocked sideways all night we're still getting knocked sideways so we're gonna lift the anchor not even quite 5 a.m. and just get out of here <laughs> don't fall overboard them's the rules next episode we finally stop rolling when we roll into the marina and we start getting ready for the massive vaccination campaign Support our work with animals by following the links at the end of this episode or check out the links below. Until next time, stay chuffed everybody.